Herb, are you expecting someone? Not them. It's pretty cool to consider that these shows all exist within the same world. Cindy? Nerdtron? Crab cakes! Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 TV crossovers. So the Mutant Ninja Turtles are for real? Yeah. <laughs> hey, we couldn't believe they were really Power Rangers either. Pretty trippy. For this list, we're taking a look at TV episodes and specials that brought two different television universes together for a single story. Who are you? <laughs> hey, I'm Will Smith. I'm the realtor. However, we've excluded crossovers between shows that have always been a part of one established universe, like Hercules and Xena or Buffy and Angel. Oh, okay. Number 10, Power Rangers and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. What are those things? I can't believe it, but I think they're... It's the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles! Yeah! In the 90s, the Power Rangers and the TMNT were two of the most marketable kid-friendly franchises. And these martial arts series finally collided in the sixth season Power Rangers episode Shell Shocked, where the heroes in a half shell are brainwashed by a stromina and turn evil. Because as of now, you work for me. <laughs> I don't think so. As you can imagine, they come out of it and partner with the Rangers to battle the manipulative Princess of Evil. You want Rangers? You gotta go through Turtle! Through adult eyes, this crossover might seem bizarre, cheesy, or just dumb. Is it true that you have a spaceship? We could sure use a lift to New York! But the eight-year-old in us all can't help but be sucked in, seeing two of the defining things from our childhoods kicking ass side by side. There's something I really would like to do, just once, before I go. Name it. <laughs> Number 9. Phineas and Ferb Meet the Marvel Universe Man, that kid's got a weird shaped head. The episode Phineas and Ferb Mission Marvel is one of the most randomly awesome crossovers to come out of Disney since Kingdom Hearts. Duck, 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 day! Sup? Phineas and Ferb and the Avengers have little in common other than their all powerful owner. Nevertheless, this is a truly well assembled special with jokes that appeal to Phineas and Ferb fans and Marvel fans alike. Hey, duck guy, thanks for the rescue. Do we tip him? He's not parking our car. I just don't know the etiquette. As the depowered superheroes partner with Phineas and Ferb to stop the Marvel baddies, highlights include the menacing Red Skull interacting with the bumbling Dr. Doofenshmirtz. I am Red Skull. Yes, yes you are. You know, you really should use sunblock. You're burned down to the bone. Perry the Platypus posing as a Howard the Duck lookalike, and of course, a hella catchy song. You think you got a hand, you better play it. But don't be surprised. Number 8. The Adventures of Jimmy Neutron Boy Genius Meet the Fairly Odd Parents. Jimmy Neutron Boy Genius. Timmy Turner! Boy! Jimmy Neutron's world is governed by science. I need raw, uncompromised technology and fast! Timmy Turner's world is governed by magic. <laughs> Mutating stuff is fun! In the Jimmy Timmy Power Hour, these Nickelodeon icons learn that they are not as different as we might imagine, with science projects and fairies and mistaken identity as the order of the day. Now that I have this magic pen, I am! <laughs> magic? Are you nuts? There's no such thing as magic! With one series utilizing traditional animation and the other employing computer-generated animation, this TV movie has leeway for a lot of inventive imagery. Hey, what are you doing in Fairy World? Well, some lunatic sucked me into your computer simulation! What lunatic? <laughs> <laughs> Seeing Jimmy and Timmy out of their comfort zones particularly makes for some inspired comedy as they attempt to return home and restore order to the Tooniverse. Mm, that's probably because you're imperfect prototypes. Well, she might not be perfect, but she's the one who said yes! Aww. Hey! Number 7. The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air meets Different Strokes and the Jeffersons. At night, you can hear the wailing of the dead. 
you talking about, Will? <laughs> the final episode of The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air not only saw the departure of the Banks family, but also the return of some other beloved TV families. With the Bel-Air mansion up for sale, several familiar faces drop by for the Banks open house in the episode I Done. We have a buyer! <laughs> Over 10 years after going off the air, Arnold Jackson and Mr. Drummond from Different Strokes reappear to check out the home and deliver some classic one-liners. Let's check out this fly pad. I could get used to living in the lap of luxury. You know, Arnold, those things were a lot funnier when you were a little child. The bank's residence ultimately goes to George and Louise Jefferson, though, who are ready to move on up once again. George, I like it. Oh, yeah, and let me tell you, next door, ooh, the girls, man, bikinis, all that. They got a regular Playboy mansion jumping off over there. <laughs> Memorial Day, it all comes off. You know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm talking about? Number six, Full House meets Family Matters. How annoying could one kid be? Honey, I'm on. Steve Urkel not only stole the show on Family Matters, but also this episode of Full House. Well, it's a pleasure to meet you, Michelle. Why'd you talk like a Mickey Mouse? <laughs> In San Francisco for a science fair, an unwelcome Urkel visits the Tanner household. It only takes a couple of minutes of cheese talk until Jesse and Danny decide that they've had enough. Uh, you can't go in there because um, we're out of cheese. Oh, no problemo. I'll just pour a glass of milk and wait for it to curdle. After he teaches Michelle about money matters, Urkel does pass on some insightful advice to Stephanie, who's insecure about her new glasses, which she never wears again anyway. The only downside? Why didn't Urkel and Kimmy Gibbler share any scenes? They were totally meant for each other. And it's a strut. And it's cool. And it's a strut. And it's cool like that, see? Very inspiring. All right. Number five, Friends meets Mad About You. Hi. Okay, will that be all? Before Lisa Kudrow landed her iconic role as Phoebe Buffay on Friends, she was best known for playing the ditzy waitress Ursula on Mad About You. No, no, how come you're working here? Right, yeah, because it's close to where I live and the aprons are really cute. Since both shows were airing around the same time, the producers decided to make the characters twin sisters. You have not changed. <sighs> Yeah, you too. <laughs> Thanks. Confusion ensues on the Friends episode, the one with two parts, as Joey meets and falls for Ursula, and Jamie Buckman and her pal Fran encounter Phoebe. Excuse me? Yeah. Hi, it's us. <laughs> right, and it's me. <laughs> so, so you're here too. Much as you are. If that's not enough must-see TV crossover action for you, this extended episode also features two cute doctors, played by George Clooney and Noah Wiley, who both hit it big that year on ER. Aren't you a little cute to be a doctor? Excuse me? I meant, God, young, young, I meant young. <laughs> young to be a doctor. Oh, good, Rach. <laughs> Thank you. Right. <laughs> Number four. Archer meets Bob's Burgers. Oh, and also I forgot to tell you guys, the health inspector's coming at 8 a.m., so you, uh, you better break out the purple stuff. Sterling Archer and Bob Belcher are both voiced by H. John Benjamin. Other than that, these two animated characters couldn't seem more different. What part of this are you not getting? Core concept. Drive, shit heel! However, in this clever crossover episode of Archer called Fugue and Riffs, we learn they're actually one and the same. Suffering from amnesia, Archer opens a burger joint, marries Linda, and helps raise her three bratty kids. It's everything. Uh, everything's fine. We're, We're close, Bob. It's Linda, seen... take the kids in the back. When the KGB shows up at Bob's Burgers, Bob slash Archer is sent on a journey for the truth that's straight out of the Bourne identity. What? KGB agents, 12 o'clock. What? Don't move a muscles, Americetskis! Does he regain his memory and go back to his life as a philandering, deadly super spy? Only the frying pan knows for sure. I need you to get down! Yes, down to the store for cheese for the Emil Gorgonzola burger. Okay, I have had it. Well, not with a Jacques Hughes cumber. No, no, I don't want cheese. Number three, Family Guy meets The Simpsons. How many confused old guys you got in this town? <laughs> so I'm the victim! There was so much hype leading up to this Family Guy episode that it's not surprising the initial viewer response was mixed. Worst 
chicken fight ever. But The Simpsons Guy is truly a classic in the making that delivers everything one could want from a Family Guy Simpsons crossover. I matter. Louder! I matter! Shut up, Meg, you don't matter. The Griffins' trip to Springfield provides one great laugh after another, full of awe-inspired animation and ingenious references. <laughs> I say, how long has that boy been treating you like that? Uh, about 24 years. The best part is just seeing these classic characters interact. As Bart raises hell with Stewie, James Woods meets James Woods, and Homer chicken fights Peter. Hey, knock it off! There's a kid back there! <laughs> I'm in danger! Oh, and Fred Flintstone calls everybody out as a ripoff. But rendering a verdict is something I'm paid to yabba dabba do! Yeah. And I find in favor of tough! Number two, Sabrina the Teenage Witch meets Boy Meets World meets You Wish meets Teen Angel. It's a boy. <laughs> okay, it's a cat. Huh? I'm stuck in the 40s and I'm dying here. They haven't invented kitty litter yet. For the 97-98 season, ABC was desperate to carry over the success of Sabrina and Boy Meets World to its new TGIF shows. That's how this four-way crossover originated. The story saw Sabrina's black cat swallow a time ball in the first show of the night. Oh, I don't feel so good. Maybe I should have chewed that thing. I'm too full to lick myself, so maybe I should just watch a little TV. For the rest of the evening, Salem ran through the other sitcoms, thrusting them into new and exciting eras. Sabrina traveled to the 60s, Boy Meets World went to World War II, You Wish was in the 50s, and Teen Angel ended up dancing disco. An ambitious crossover, yes. It's up to you to decide if it succeeded. Be still my heart. <coughs> oh, be still my stomach. Before we cross over to our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. I'm totally alone. So go ahead, do your worst. Maybe we can... Help each other. What are you gonna do with those papers? Making out my will. What are you dying? Well, eventually, you know. We all gotta go. Not me. <sighs> what do you mean? What do you know somebody? Cryonics, Paul. The big chill. You know, I like this car. You never let me drive it. This is a special situation here. Oh, yeah, okay. I'm your brother, and he's a complete stranger. Okay, got it. I feel a little woozy. Oh, drink it off, sweetheart. Drink it off, sweetie. <laughs> what you saw was large, right? Maybe seven, eight feet tall when it stood up on its two legs, and it was covered in fur, and had glowing red eyes and claws. Claws sharp enough to gouge the wood off that front door. You're not serious. And dare I forget teeth. Number one, the Jetsons meet the Flintstones. Hold still, Dino! <laughs> yeah! While Hanna-Barbera wasn't the first studio to experiment with crossovers, the 1987 TV movie The Jetsons Meet the Flintstones certainly popularized the concept. Yabba uh, dabba, friend! Mr. J, you learned a whole new language! How about that, Fred? It's actually surprising Hanna-Barbera took so long to bring television's definitive prehistoric family and ultimate futuristic family together. I know this is difficult for you. Heck no, he's doing all the work. At last, somebody who appreciates me. They completely delivered, however, in a blast from the future and the past, made possible by Elroy Jetson's time machine. What is it? It's my time travel machine. You're right, I don't believe it works. Then how do you explain this? I don't have to explain it. You have to explain it. This union of cartoon royalty offers a lot of the creative comedic scenarios both shows were known for, as well as loads of heart. Ow! Don't hold food over the Pigasaurus disposal. Almost 30 years later, it's still the crossover to beat all crossovers. Oh boy! Bedrock, we're on our way! We can't wait to get home! So long, George! Bye, Fred! Bye! So long, Wilma! Bye, Daddy! See you around, Reno! Bye. Bye! Do you agree with our list? What's your favorite TV crossover? For more entertaining top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. Now what are you doing? 
He thinks two eye patches makes him look twice as cool. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, 